Hey, what's up guys? I am back with another video. And this time I am back in Denver, standing in my brother's garage. Normally I'd prefer standing in the middle of nowhere somewhere, but I had to come back here and get some things done on my van so that I can get out on the road again on another multi-month trip to the Midwest. If you're new to my channel, first of all, thank you for watching. And you may be new because of the last dozen or so videos I've released about my travels around the Southwest. Not only do I do van life travel videos on this channel, but I also do van life build videos on this channel. So if you're not familiar already, about a year and a half ago, I bought this van and I started the build out process myself right here in this driveway. And since then I've taken the van on multiple trips and I have procrastinated on getting some things done in the van that really need to be done so I can call this project complete or semi-complete or almost complete or however you wanna look at it. So I figured in this video, I'll show you guys kind of where I'm at with the van build, what things I'm working on in the, for the next month or so before I take off again and kind of just give you guys an overall overview of the van itself and where it's come since the beginning. If you're interested in seeing some of the process of my van build, you can watch some of my YouTube videos in my video list, or you can check me out on my Instagram and see some photos of my progress there. There's a lot more photos on Instagram than there are build videos. So if you wanna kind of see how things have come together, check out my Instagram. There's a link in my description below. But let's get more into this video and I'll kind of show you guys where I'm at with things with the van. So first of all, you may have not noticed these boxes in some of my previous videos. That's because I left these storage boxes here in the garage on my last trip, but I've decided to put them back on the hitch and I'll be leaving them there for my next journey to the Midwest. The reason why I have them is because I have a bed lift system in the back of this van, which means I don't have any garage space under my bed like most van builds do. If you wanna see how I built my bed lift system, you can click the link up there or over there or down there or wherever it's at. And you can check out my most popular video on my YouTube channel about how I built my bed lift system with 8020 aluminum and linear actuators. But we're also gonna go over the way it's progressed since the first time I put it together to how it functions now and how it looks in there now. So with these boxes here, you may be wondering how am I gonna get in the back doors well this actually has a pretty cool pivot system on it so these actually just pivot on out like this and then it gives me full access to my back doors so I can open those up and do what I need to do inside the van so let's go ahead and open these doors and I'll kind of show you guys the things I've been working on and give you an overview of where my bed lift system is at currently as I mentioned, I don't have a fixed bed, so I do not have any garage space for storage under here. Instead, what I have is a bench over here and I have a workstation over here. Normally I have a butcher block tabletop right here that actually slides out and slides back so that when I'm sitting on my bench over here, I can pull the table closer to me and get my work done or eat my meals or just whatever I need to do there on that tabletop. I've removed the tabletop for now and set it over here because I am doing work underneath there and I needed it out of my way to get some work done. So that's where I chill and that's where I hang out and all that. So up above here is actually my bed frame. This is my bed frame here with the Ikea slats. And normally I have a mattress up there and this whole system goes up and down. When I wanna sleep, I bring it down. When I wake up in the morning, I left it back up. And then I have this whole area to do what I need to do back here. And it also gives a place for my dog to chill out on this bench. So let's go inside and I'll kind of show you guys how this system works and how it's changed since the beginning. So if you're not familiar with the way I initially built out my bed lift system, you can check out that video in the link there or there or down there, wherever it's at. And you can get an idea of how I originally built it. And then you can compare that to how it ended up being. So first let me go over how this whole thing functions. So in each of the four corners of the bed frame here, I have these 80-20, uh, these are one and a half by one and a half inch aluminum framing strips with channels in them. There's one on each of the four corners. Up here is the 80-20 linear bearing. And this basically connects to three of the channels on here. This one, the front one, and the other side back there you can't see. And this slides up and down this aluminum piece when the actuator goes up and down. So back here is the linear actuator. This is a 12 volt motorized actuator. And when I push the button, lowers this bar back here, which then guides this linear bearing down this to down there. And I have one of them on all sides. So there's another bearing up there with a linear actuator back there. And it guides right down this channel. Same over here and finally over there. So it's supported on all four corners. The bed will drop down all the way down to about here. So how that's done is with these two switches I installed here. I did two switches because I can adjust the front two, which are closer to me with one switch. And I can adjust the back two with another switch. That way, if I'm like parked on a slope like this, I can bring up the front a little bit, maybe an inch or two or the back and kind of level out the bed when I'm parked on a unlevel surface. So I'll give you a quick idea of how this looks when I push these buttons down. So I just dropped it down about three inches. Normally I can drop it all the way down here, but for the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna drop it a couple inches and raise it back up. 
and that's basically how the system works. If you want to know more about the system in detail, you can watch that video. I go over it in quite a bit more detail in that video, but I just kind of wanted to show you where it's at now compared to the uh, first time I put it together. Because the first time I put it together, I was actually using 8020 that was a different size. It was, this is one and a half by one and a half. I was using one and a half by three inch, so it was quite a bit wider out to here which means I had a different bearing too that was quite a bit wider as well so they could fit around the one one and a half by three inch piece of aluminum. But after building things out and learning more about the products and what's available and what kind of support I need I realized that was overkill and so I ended up redoing that part of it and getting the one and a half inch by one and a half inch and the smaller linear bearings. Also originally in my original video you'll notice that these were mounted on the back wall there about right there there was one and then there was another one over there and same on the other side these two were mounted on this wall here and this wall here but since then i framed out more of my van and added paneling and such so behind this wall here is my dresser and then over here is my fridge and i had to get the panels on here and i had to get some paneling back here and i ended up putting my paneling on here and in the process of building out the back of the van i decided to move them from this wall to this wall because it made adding my wall panels here a lot easier and I think this just overall looks better and functions a lot better than the way I had it before. So with that being said, that's basically how the system looks now and how it works. I don't have any blueprints. I don't have any drawings whatsoever or anything. Uh, I just started building out the van and as I was building it, I had to change things around. And, you know, as I framed out this area where my water tank is, you know, I just kind of made a decision at one point in time to basically make a partial wall here and move the 8020 to this side. And then I copied it and mirrored it over here and did the same thing. And then I kind of figured out, kind of figured I'll do the same thing over here and over here. So how did I attach these to this wall? Well, I ended up getting them set up before putting the paneling on. And then I figured out where I needed my holes drilled and I drilled my holes in the paneling, the paneling up, and then I was able to mount this on here and get it secured. And then lastly, I ended up putting the paneling on the back after I got the 8020 bolted to the other side. So this black paneling got put up later and same on this side. And you'll notice on this side, I have two holes, one here and one there. And those are access holes to the bolts for the brackets that hold the 8020 on to this side here. So that if I need to tighten them, I can get in there and tighten them. And eventually I'm gonna do the same thing to this side, cut some access holes and tighten up those bolts if I need to. As far as the other two pieces of aluminum that are also bolted, on the other side of these panels in order to access those it's pretty easy i just have to i just have to open my closet door here and remove a box that i built inside and i can easily access those two bolts back there and to access these two bolts i just have to remove my fridge which is actually pretty easy to remove and then i have access to those two bolts to tighten those up however on my journeys for the last three months or so driving over bad road washboard road dirt roads and whatnot i haven't had any issues they haven't come loose or anything the only problem i've had one bolt came loose and that was the bolt holds my linear actuator right here to a bracket mounted to the 8020 down there. And I've already gone ahead and tightened that up. But otherwise, the 8020 and the bolts um, have held everything up in here pretty well, so I'm not too concerned about it. But if there is a time that I need to tighten up some more bolts, then I'll be able to access everything and get those tightened up. So with that being said, guys, that's all I really have to say about the bed lift. This is the underneath view of my bed frame when it's up there and when I'm sitting here. And eventually I'm going to add a ceiling sort of thing to the bottom of the bed so you don't see these wood slats and you don't see the bottom of the mattress when you're back here. I just haven't gotten to that yet because there's some other things I need to work on and that I've been working on and that I want to get done first and that'll come eventually and I'll show you guys an update on that when I get to that point but since this is a van build update video I'll kind of show you guys what else I've been working on the last week or so and what I'm planning to finish up in this video the one thing I've been working on mostly in the last week or so is my bench if you want to see how my bench looked previously I'm sure I have pictures on my Instagram or you can check out some of my videos and I'm sure it's in some of my videos but what I've been building here is a bench that I can slide out to create a lounge area either for myself or for my dog or possibly for a smaller person that may need a place to sleep. So basically what I have here is I have this bench on a piano hinge and this whole top will fold down completely and I can access all my wiring that comes into my battery bank back here. What the real purpose of this bench is, is to slide out and create a level platform for chilling out on. Let me put you on the tripod here and I'll show you how that works. So right now it's in bench mode and if I want it to be in a level flat mode so I can lay on here and get more comfortable then basically what's going to happen is it's just going to slide out like this and create this flat surface like so and yes of course I'll have cushions on here um, and all of that so right now it's in the beginning stages and I will be finishing this and getting it painted and 
set up real nice. And also with this setup, I will be able to remove this whole thing if, if I need to, to access my battery bank. So let me show you that real quick. I'm just gonna pull this out. And now what you have here is basically just a bench with no backrest. You can basically remove this whole panel this is where all my power is stored, obviously. If you guys want to know more about this, let me know in the comments and I'll create a video and show you guys how I put this together and what I have in here to make everything run the way it runs. So that basically covers the, uh, the bench that I'm working on. And when I get more of that done, I'll kind of show you guys the uh, final outcome of that in another video. But what I'm most excited about here in this video is getting my flooring finally installed. So as you see here, I do have flooring in here. This is just the, this is just the basic subfloor I've had in here since day one but I'm excited to get a floor in here finally. And that's what I have right up here is my new flooring, which is Life Proof Driftwood Beach. I wanted something really light for the floor. And you can see it has subtle gray wood grain in it, which is fine with me. And to be honest, I had a floor in here already, a vinyl plank flooring, and it was a very dark color, much like my cabinets here, kind of went with those. But the problem with that was you could literally see like all the dust and dirt and grime and everything really easily on the floor. And that got annoying. I was feeling like I had to constantly clean the floor. So I'm hoping with a whiter, lighter floor, I won't have that issue as much. And another reason why I had to get rid of that floor was because it got pretty severely damaged um, hauling stuff in this van to finish my build. Now, some people, some people add their vinyl plank flooring before they add any of their cabinetry and such. And I considered doing that, but I knew it would get damaged by the time I was ready to uh, be done with the van. And I know that the floor is going to get damaged in the future. So I decided to do my flooring after installing everything so that if my flooring does get damaged, I can replace it with new flooring in the future and not have to rip everything out of the van or have to lay new flooring on top of the old flooring and all of that and make, you know, make the, uh, and then lose, you know, additional height in the van in the future. So that's why I'm doing it now. And that's what we're going to do in this video. All right, I'm back. So it was supposed to like be kind of rainy and cloudy today, but it turned out to be a pretty nice day. So I switched to a baseball cap and took my hoodie off and I've started getting the floor in. So let's go take a look at the side of it here. So the hardest part's done, which was basically the cuts around the front here where it curves in and back around that area. So that's all done, looking pretty good. And I just have to work my way to the back and that's gonna be the easy part. So I should be able to get this done here today. All right, so it's a new day again, and I'm continuing to finish off this flooring. So let me show you guys what I did recently. So a couple days ago, I went through and I caulked all the seams on the edges, as you can see here. That is white silicone, acrylic silicone caulk. And I did it all the way around, all the edges, all the way throughout the van. And today I went and picked up these strips of pine that I'm going to apply Danish oil to, and I'm going to use these as my trim along the bottom to cover up that edge like so. And it should add a nice little accent to the van, kind of match, match the rest of the natural wood that I have going on in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this stuff in, in place and then get it stained with Danish oil and get that installed. I think I'm just going to glue it to the other wood that's already down here, this white. So that's what I'm gonna do to finish up this van floor. And there may be some other things in this video as well to show you some more updates. We've already talked about the bench and whatnot. I still have to work on that, but there's one thing that I've been wanting to do for a while now, and that's basically relocate my water fill. So this is where I currently fill my water with this stainless steel little screw. This thing comes unscrewed and then the water goes into the tank through this tube here. However, if I'm not paying close attention, or even if I am, a lot of times I get water that comes out of here and gets all over the place down here. And I don't want water seeping into my wood paneling and stuff. So, so I'm gonna relocate this to the outside of the van, but I picked up some new parts for that. I picked up a locking water fill. It's actually pretty decent quality for being plastic. It's a durable plastic here. Picked up some new tubing. I'm going to turn this elbow 90 degrees facing that way and run the tube out the side of the wall and mount this right there. I'm not a huge fan of cutting holes in my van or mounting things that make it less stealthy looking. You know, having this there is, I guess it kind of looks like a gas tank cap. Maybe it's not that bad. It is black, it'll blend in with the van. So, but that'll allow me to fill from the outside of the van. And if I overflow the tank, it's just gonna spill outside and not get inside my van. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this. All right, guys, wish me luck. I just spent the last hour or so determining where I can cut this hole for my new water fill. And 
I hope I did it right because if I messed it up, there's no turning back from cutting a three inch hole in the side of your van. So let me show you how I determine that real quick. So basically back here, I removed some of my insulation in the general area where I want the new fill to go and carefully doing measurements back and forth and using my punch right here. I was able to punch a couple spots close to each other over here. It's gonna be hard to see in the camera perhaps, but there's one punch right there and another right above it. And by going back on the inside and the outside and measuring and everything, I'm gonna use the top punch hole here to drill my three inch hole, which is going to basically fit right here, hopefully. That's the idea. So if we grab my three inch hole dozer and put it right there on the top hole, it's gonna cover exactly what I need, I think. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to use some painter's tape and I'm going to tape over this area and I'm gonna cut my hole. And if I did everything correctly, then we should be good to go. If not, then I got a big problem on my hands. And that should be good enough. I'm gonna go grab my drill and we're gonna drill this hole. And at this point, all I need is good luck. All right, I just cut a hole in the van. All right, I guess we can see if it fits. I should have went, I should have went a little bit bigger. Oh, I should have went a little bit bigger. So it'll work, guys. I just should have went a little bit bigger with the, with the hole. That's okay. I'll grab my Dremel and go around and open this up a little bit bigger. All right, guys, that didn't take very long at all. And now it sits flush here, just like that. Let's go see what it looks like on the inside. All right, so there it is on the inside. That turned out actually perfect. So now I just have a piece of tube that's gonna run from here to over here, and I'll be able to fill my water from the outside of the van, which I am pretty happy about. So what I'm gonna do is, I'll do all this off camera. I'll explain to you first. I'm going to remove this. I'm gonna remove all this tape. I'm gonna grab some spray paint primer and primer all, primer all this metal I just cut so it doesn't rust. Actually, I'll do that before I remove the tape. I'll primer all this metal and then let that dry. I'll get my tube connected to this and hose clamped, and then I'll run this whole tube inside the hole to the elbow in the tank and determine how long I need it to be. I'll cut the tube and then I'll get it hose clamped to that and we'll be done after I drill three more holes in the van to mount this. Let me get everything done and I'll show you guys what the final outcome looks like. The day is coming to an end here soon, but I thought I'd show you real quick how the new water inlet ended up coming together. So we, here we have the tube coming in from the outside into this elbow here and straight down into the tank. And it's at a slight angle, if you can't tell on camera. Probably goes up about an inch from that side and then down an inch to this side. And this is gonna be really nice. Let's take a look at the outside. So I ended up priming the paint and getting this installed here. And I just siliconed it. That should dry clear by tomorrow. And look, it'll look like it belongs right here. Comes with a key, two keys actually. And you just pop that off and there you go. You can fill, fill the water right from the outside. Put that back on and nobody can mess with your water tank and put anything harmful in there. So I'm pretty happy about that. So I need to make sure I put these keys inside the van somewhere so they're safe. And um, yeah, that's about it guys. So tomorrow I'm gonna be working on getting this trim installed so I can call the floor finished and possibly call this video finished with some upgrades here. I'm not sure how long this video is getting at this point, but it seems like it's getting pretty long and I gotta try to keep it short. I'll probably just do the trim and throw this video up online. I don't know what else to do. Um, I do have to finish my bench, but that's gonna take quite a while. So I'll probably just do that in another video. Um, show you guys what the completed bench system looks like. And yeah, that's about it. So I'll see you in the next one.